Stop jumping on me. Ah, oh, why are you doing that? Having a bad dog day? Rex, come back here. From police dogs to pet dogs, from potty training to pet peeves, number one best-selling author and 30-year canine trainer Andy Falco knows how to get to the meat of what's eating your dog. This is Falco Canine Dog Talk, the show that helps you and your dog create a relationship of love and respect. What a good boy. Good heel, Rex. I love you, Rex. And now here's your host, Andy Falco. Hello, hello, hello. This is Andy over at Falco Canine Academy's Train the Dog Trainer program and Falco Canine's Dog Talk. Welcome, and um, thank you, Christopher, for such a nice uh, 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 introduction there on our intro uh, music that comes on in. I'm still struggling not to say video or watch. (laughs) I will stop soon. I just do so many videos that uh, I cannot get that out of my head. And forgetting this is only an audio podcast, um, I'm I'm struggling with that a bit. Um, And so this episode is going to be talking about... um, uh, the value of teaching, and I, I, you don't want to take that for granted. You know, back when I was a canine handler at Anaheim Police Department and first got noticed uh, for some interest and in, uh, skill, I guess I was showing in regard to uh, training dogs and, and human beings, uh, I uh, began to um, run our monthly and weekly training uh, with our own handlers. And a couple of new guys would ask me some questions, so then I would respond, or they would say, hey, I have this problem, what do you think? And... Um, I begin to uh, get into the what would be considered the trainer um, area of, of of this dog world stuff, especially in, in regard to police dogs. And then um, uh, I also got noticed by an international um, uh, canine conference group who uh, the founder saw me at a canine competition, saw that we had success, we had a couple of conversations, and uh, the next thing you know, he had asked me if I wanted to be one of the instructors at the International Police Canine Conferences, and I did. And it was amazing that uh, uh, up to that point for whatever it was, five years or so as a canine decoy, then a canine handler, I was learning stuff by doing and observing and then my growth as a trainer and my knowledge uh, began to grow exponentially once I began teaching. So uh, what you, if you don't know this, teaching really is a great way to learn. <laughs> and it sounds really strange. If you're the one teaching, you should be teaching other people and other people should be learning from you. But uh, little did I know, I found out later that I guess there has been a, a number of studies done on this and I don't know how big the number is, but I know that people, I've read uh, writings about it online and both in magazines, and that the the act of teaching somebody else actually creates knowledge in the teacher, and both obviously gains experience in the uh, the act of teaching, but they gain knowledge in what it is they're teaching by teaching, uh, because you are going to be putting yourself, and, and I don't, I, I get, I'm sure there's a lot of other reasons what, than what I'm going to bring up, but I know for sure uh, because this is what happens with me. When I'm teaching, I get confronted with uh, problems that I have to solve. And sometimes I know the answer right away because I've done it before, or I have to figure out and compute, I guess, all the data and and then spit out through words or action what the solution is for the problem, even though that I'd never been encountered by that specific problem before. But as you do it more and more, your brain... Uh, gets trained to pull out the files out of whatever drawer that they're in and you begin to now put them together and use them. And so your brain begins to uh, be used for this concept of of problem solving and creating a a knowledge base for fixing issues that people bring to you and then thereby your knowledge of training increases uh, even though you are teaching. And so uh, what I don't want you to do is what took me years to figure out, which was probably, gosh, I don't know, five years after I started teaching at the canine conferences. I go, wow, I really know a lot of stuff. Uh, I guess the other advantage is I was working with other fantastic trainers and we were able to um, network a little bit some of our information and, uh, you know, say Billy Knott or Bob Wright or uh, uh, Mark Ficadenti would uh, would be my training partner uh, and 
they would say, hey, I've seen this before. This is what we did for that. And then, okay, and I'll say, good. I go, there's one little part that I like to do. And we, then we end up pulling our information together and come up with a solution. And so when you're partnered with somebody and teaching as a team, that also then uh, increases it even, I think, even tenfold. I mean, it just really a rapid growth that you are now combining two minds to have experience and creating one solution. And you're doing it because you are, you're working with another person. They bring their knowledge to the table. You bring your knowledge to the table. And now you can bring a whole, uh, not necessarily a new concept. It's really hard to say that there's anything new in dog training. There's just things that happen uh, uh, to uh, get brought up that maybe you haven't heard before or seen before. But somebody else has probably done it or doing it. So um, I'm here to tell you that once you've had these dogs under your belt that you I, I've suggested over the last few podcasts, uh, that you do, you they're, they're, they're at some point you need to, if you're going to really grow uh, exponentially is a, is a great word. If you're going to really begin to grow, you're going to have to now find people that you're going to teach. So let's say that you are training your neighbor's dog uh, because you follow the direction to find a friend or family's dog and begin just working with them and training them to sit, down, stay, come, uh, all, the, all the normal stuff. <clears throat> and, and you're doing a good job and you're seeing a difference. Now what you need to do is bring your neighbor in and teach them what you did and teach them how they can maintain the behaviors that you were able to create through the techniques that you were using with their dog. And now really paying attention. I didn't pay attention to what I was doing early on. It wasn't until later that I really began to pay attention and back to journaling again. I know that some of you kind of roll your eyes probably and think that's a, you know, why would I do that? That's a lot of work. But sitting down an hour for about an hour and journaling what you learned and saw and felt and heard and and tasted, I guess, even if that could even happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how, but I'll, I'll think of something in the, in the future. Um, all of those stimulus, writing down what it was, what was the weather like when you were doing this thing? What was the uh, surface like that you were training the dog on? Was it on grass? Was it on asphalt? Was it on cement? Uh, where was the human being? What's the human, uh, what's one of the traits that they have out of those five um, uh, personalities that we pointed out um, at, at the last episode? Which one do they have? Um, what is your, what is the dog's, um, uh, personality like? Is he, uh, you know, a, a hothead? Is he mild manner? Is he fearful? Is he confident? You know, writing these things down and then, and then you're, you're putting down the information that you're going to be able to, to look at from a, um, a, a hundred foot point of view and see all like, oh, wow. Okay. I see what happened here. Then what will end up happening is that now you're going to be able to say, okay, now that worked on grass where the dog feels most comfortable, he can dig in his nails, he can do all that stuff. What difference do I see when I'm working on asphalt with the same dog on the same problem? What difference do I see from this dog when we're working on slick floors and PetSmart? Uh, uh, you know, not even PetSmart. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to another place with slick floors. Um, the kitchen of the, the owner's home or a basketball court that happens to be nearby that you're able to use. And then maybe to PetSmart where there's a potential of other dogs that are going to be present and the sights and sounds found inside of a store. How does that change the, 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 the training? How does it uh, uh, change the, the learning of the dog? How does it change the learning of the human being and, and journaling? And then you're going to be coming up with all these things and say, you know, it's really interesting. What I found is, and this is you talking to yourself or look, after looking at what it is that you wrote down, that I, I've noticed that some people struggle when we're in a public pace. Now, that's easy, right? Many people struggle in a public place because they get embarrassed they feel uncomfortable doing stuff in front of somebody else they don't like that you are telling them what to do in front of other people there's something that happens the dynamics the dynamics change when you're in a public environment as opposed to when you are by yourselves in the corner of a park where there was nobody around to see you right and then you see how that changes whether the dog is obedient or not, whether the dog learns well or not, whether the dog uh, maintains uh, the behavior for longer periods of times or shorter uh, periods of times. And you be, you're going to begin to formulate all this information. And by writing it down in your journal and being aware of it and conscious of it, it's going to be something that will just – you can just – remember it you can it'll become part of who you are as a dog trainer and you may at some point never even need to think about it again you're just going to know you're going to you're going to see something happening you're going you know what why that's happening is because it's a it's at night <clears throat> and this dog is not a, a twilight dog the dog you know works uh, 
more efficiently during the day or in the morning or whatever. Again, these are extreme examples, but you can see my point. Um, the dog will do this at home in a, in, a, in a quiet environment that the dog is familiar with, but the dog won't do this in a public environment where the dog is unsure about himself. The handler acts different, and um, in this particular situation, the dog was in a, uh, a pet smart where there's other dogs. And so you see this market difference. And so now you need to know where the training needs to go. Uh, and, but you're only going to learn this kind of stuff by doing it, right? If uh, you spend all your time uh, learning about training dogs on a green grassy field that has a, uh, a fence around it and it's uh, 50 feet by 100 feet, um, you're going to see something completely different. If you've only been doing that there, you're going to say, you know, that's where you're, you're, you're training the dogs and your, your group obedience takes place. If you were to actually go somewhere with that handler and that dog that's in the class and go with them to a store, um, you're going to possibly see a completely different dog but if you know that in advance you can now be the expert in your class that's on that green grassy field with a fence around it and say what you need to do is take what we are applying here and now you need to slowly begin to apply it in situations like pet smart or pet go and then you're going to say because this is often what we see we see that the dogs sometimes are weakened by being in that type of environment or they're stronger by being in that type of an environment and so you're going to now need to be aware of that. This is you talking to the customer, and it, you're, you're basing that off your experience. You're basing that off of teaching people in various environments so that you're beginning to learn how people react differently based on where they're at, uh, based on what the weather is, possibly based on whether it's nighttime or daytime. Um, uh, there's uh, so much to be learned. So. Uh, just to review, let's let's take everything that you you've followed. Let's let's say that you follow everything I've said at this point, right? Uh, that you uh, begin to get dogs under your belt. You're going to rescues and shelters where you're working specifically with the dogs and learning about dogs. You're journaling all that, uh, and now you're bringing in. Let's bring in the humans, either the foster parent for a dog, or the owner of a dog, or your neighbor uh, and their dog, or your family member and their dog. And now you're going to teach them what it is that you did. You're going to teach them about the equipment, why you chose that equipment. You're going to teach them about how to get their dog to do the same thing for them because quite often the dog will do it for you but probably will not do it for their human because they have not been taught how to do it in a way the dog understands. Uh, to the dog, the human that they live with is completely different than the human that they're training with, uh, which is, would be you in this circumstance. And so you need to make sure that you give that customer clear information that they're going to listen to and you're going to pay attention to when that is they're listening when they're not because you can do that uh, I know when somebody and I'm speaking to them is actually listening to me and then when they're not and sometimes you need to shake them up and say okay um, go ahead and, and start and they'll go uh, start what uh, I want you to do what I just talked about um, can you tell me again what that was <laughs> and uh, they will begin to listen to you because if you start doing that to them they're going to not want to be put in that position where they don't know what it is that you've asked them to do Right. And so this is where really and I hate to say the saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, where the rubber meets the road. I hate that saying, <laughs> but this is where it all begins to come together. Right. Because I've told you before that the human being is the most important part of this um, of this uh, you know, business. Uh, it, it's not the dog. It is the human being. So you're going to learn about dogs. You're going to learn the, 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 the personality traits, the five personality traits. You're now going to begin teaching people. And you're going to figure out who it is that you like working with. That's the next thing. You're going to learn about who it is you like working with and who you don't like working with. Maybe you like only working with men. Maybe you only like working with women. Maybe you only like working with children. Maybe you only like working with uh, adults that are uh, 30 and above. You know, Whatever that is, this is where you're going to figure it out if you don't already know already. Because you're going to be putting, you're putting yourself in positions now that you have to perform. And there's going to be times where you don't like performing for a particular group of people or you don't feel comfortable maybe they're intimidating maybe you just don't maybe just enjoy uh training women over men or men over women right and so you're going to have to get out there and do this you're going to gain knowledge uh you're going to journal it down you're going to figure out all the all the the combinations now between dog and humans and uh and figure out what that means if you're lucky you'll have a family that has more than one dog uh in their uh family and you'll see them working with the big German shepherd dog and then maybe with a, a smaller uh, cockapoo or something like that and seeing how they treat the dogs differently and you're going to find different solutions for each one of the dogs and so you're going to have to get out there and start experiencing what it's like to teach all right so that's that's what we need to know, take away from this podcast is that teaching is powerful it's a powerful learning tool 
for anybody who's going to be training any uh, any subject to anyone, right? So don't take it for granted. Make sure that you journal what you learned, what worked and what did not work. Those are really important things that you need to list. You're going to journal what you learned, what worked and what didn't work. Those are, are really key points right there, okay? And there's gonna, there's a few more of the things that I talked about, uh, who the people are, men, women, how old they are. Um, again, what the what the weather's like, what the temperature is, day or time, day or night, and you're going to list these things down so that you can get a kind of a pattern for when it is that you work on at your best, and what type of people you really like working with, and what type of dogs you really like working with. All right, so begin to teach. Don't take it for granted. Get her done. All right, that's it for me here at Falco Canine Academy's Train the Dog Trainer Program and Falco Canine Dog Talk. And uh, I'm so happy that you've decided to listen to our podcast. So thank you very much. Uh, you know that you can listen to our podcast on Facebook at Train the Dog Trainer on our Facebook page, Train the Dog Trainer. Go there and you will see uh, the audio files uh, that uh, look like videos on our Facebook page. You can also find us on iTunes called Andy Falco's Train the Dog Trainer Show. And uh, where else? Uh, 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 shoot, what's it called? I already forgot what it's called. Uh, there's a couple other places. It's the Android one. I forget what it's called. Switcher or Twitch or something like that. I can't remember. I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll get it to you. I'm, I'm a Mac person, so of course I know iTunes. Uh, and uh, that comes to mind right away. But either way, uh, I really appreciate your time and listening. And uh, in, uh, if you go to our Facebook page, it would be great if you commented on this particular uh, posting uh, podcast uh, and let me know what you think and what your thoughts are. That would be awesome. All right, so go ahead and feel free to do that. All right, that is it for me here on today's podcast, and I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to Falco Canine Dog Talk, the show that helps you and your dog create a relationship of love and respect. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address at www.falcocanineacademy.com and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Falco Canine Academy. Follow us on twitter.com slash Falco Canine Academy and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Falco 143. And remember, if you've got questions for Andy, call the canine line at 714-798-9961. That's 714-798-9961. This is a production of Falco Enterprises Incorporated. All rights reserved.